Hey guys, Henning and Morten from Flip Models here. In this video, we are going to be taking you through how to take your model from ZBrush and directly into Substance Painter. I would normally be doing this through a third party software like Maya, but in this tutorial, we're going to going, be going directly without any hassle. So we're starting off with our model in ZBrush. Now it's important that everything here is ready for production, meaning that it has UVs and has topology and has all that. Your model should really be finished at this point. We have it in, um, in different subtools. So we have the eyes in one and we have the glasses and then we have a head as one as well. The first thing we need to do is we need to decimate our model because it's far too heavy to bring into Painter. You could also go down to the lowest subdivision level and you could bake some normal maps out for it, but we're not going to be doing that. We're not going to be aiming for a real-time game workflow for this. We're going to be doing more just if you were to do this for a personal project, commercial, or film, or whatever it is, where you don't really have to optimize the model. We're going to bring the high-risk model directly into Painter, which honestly makes our lives a lot easier because you're not dealing with normal maps or any of that. So the very first thing is we have to decimate our model. And we have already done that because we prepped a little. <laughs> so the way you do that though, is you go under C plugin. Then we go to decimation master. Then you can go down here, simply hit 150 K. That's what, that's the setting we're using, but make sure that keep UVs are enabled and then hit it. This is going to make sure that your model will retain the UVs through some magic after it's been decimating. For people who don't know what decimation, decimation is, it preserves your details while reducing the poly count. So you can see here the model is completely unusable from a topological point of view, but it preserves all the nice details for it. So it looks really good. And this is how you'd often texture something, because you really want to have a close approximation in whatever texturing software you have to what your final model looks like. Otherwise, you're just asking for trouble. Then once we've done that, we need to merge all the visible subtools into, into one, into one subtool, which we can export out. We do this by going under tool, uh, subtool merge, and then we hit merge visible, but make sure that UVs are enabled. If UVs are not enabled, you're going to be setting up everything, spend 10, 20 minutes on it. And then you'd bring it into painter and it's going to tell you, Hey, UVs aren't enabled. I know that because I just did that. <laughs> it's uh it's an unfortunate thing. Like this happens so much uh, in production as well, where you're like, you're working on something, you need to merge stuff. A few hours after you've merged it, you realize, oh shit, I don't have UVs anymore. Yeah. So R it's a uh, world of pain. <laughs> yeah. So by hitting this, we now get a copy of it. So it's now been duplicated and we have everything up here. So if you hit shift F, we have polygroups. Polygroups are essential for this workflow. Before you merge as well, you can also create polygroups. We already had some. If you didn't, you can go to um, uh, tool polygroups and you can hit auto group. Auto group is going to give you different polygroups based on the model. So now you can see for instance, the glasses, each each part of the, of the glasses are, is now one polygroup. The advantage of merging this or making polygroups before merging is now you don't have to do this again. So for our case, we're just gonna be looking at what polygroups we have which is uh, we have a two for the eyes and a two per eye. So we're going to have to make one for the glasses, one for the head, and then one for the outer eye and one for the inner eye. The reason this is important is because the polygroups are going to determine the texture sets we are going to be using in Painter, which as you know, is just incredibly important to get right. Yeah, I guess like the outer eye, the polygroup for that, the purpose is that is so we can apply a transparency shader to exactly. it. Exactly. We had one for the glasses as well. It was just too much of a hassle. Mm. So I deleted that. <laughs> so what you can do is control shift click and that removes the model you're clicking on, click it again. And now we only have the two eyes visible. Then we hit polygroups. That was our auto groups. And now we get different polygroups per model. So if you control shift click again, it's going to hide the one I'm clicking on. And now I want one polygroup for these two. You can do this very easily by hitting Control W. That's going to group unmasked, which is awesome. So now you can just hit Control W a few times, and whatever is visible is going to be one polygroup. Yeah, Control W is an excellent hotkey, actually. Yeah, you can do it with everything. masking as well. If you mask something, then only the affected areas will get the new polygroup. You're going to use this all the time. For instance, you could you could do this, like uh, do a topological mask. And then you can do a polygroup for it. Incredibly handy if you need to pose something like an arm or yeah. fingers or something. 
But yeah, just hit Control W to make sure these have polygroups. Control Shift Drag to make sure everything is visible. And now we just need to do this with everything. Um, right. This is where I do. I have to. I have to get everything. <laughs> But these two, so click them and then inverse the selection. And then we have them. We're not going to go too deep into how, to, how you make polygroups because this is not a beginner tutorial. Uh, it gets, it's a bit tricky in the beginning. It gets into your fingers after a while. Yeah. If you need documentation on that, simply just Google um, ZBrush polygroups help. <laughs> and the official ZBrush docs are going to help, help. you. Help. <laughs> That's generally the feeling you have working with ZBrush a lot of times. It's just this despair feeling. Yeah. <laughs> so now we have a bunch of polygroups here. One for the head, one for glasses, and then two for the eyes. In this case, we want the eyes to be in the same polygroup because we want them to be in the same texture set later on, which just makes it a lot easier. So now our model is ready to be exported out. The way we're going to be exporting is using the FBX plugin. So under C plugin, we just dock this over, go all the way to the top. And now we are going to be using the uh, FBX multi uh, export import. Now, what we have to do is we have to go under options and we have to enable, uh, set this, make sure this is set to 100. This is going to smooth our normals. If these are set, if this is set to zero, you're going to get really harsh normals like this. And this is going to massively screw up your bakes in Painter because now your ambient occlusion, curvature, everything is going to have these this faceting built into it. So make sure this is set to 100. We're also going to um, enable export polygroups as mats, which uh, will export different materials, different colored materials for each polygroup, which means we can now use this as our texture sets. And that's really it for the export. Now we simply just hit export. And we just put it in here and call it head texture ready or whatever you want to call it. So we go to file new. And this is a, a very standard approach to setting up a project. You should hopefully be familiar with this. Now we have our FBX ready and uh, just default settings, whatever you want. Uh, 1K is enough for us now for this example, but choose whatever resolution you want for a final project. And now for some reason, our background is black. We can't. <laughs> so let's just enable some slight color here so you're not just going crazy and getting depressed. So what you can see up here now is that we have different texture sets. If we now were to hide the different ones, you can see that they are working as expected. So let's just hide each and just rename them. It's incredibly important that you rename this as soon as you're... Um, as soon as you get into it, otherwise you're in a world of trouble. I was kind of expecting you to go like, it's really important to name them, but uh, for this tutorial, we're just going to skip it. <laughs> <laughs> we would never do such a thing for a tutorial. So now we have all texture sets. Uh, a little tip as well for you. This is something that Reese introduced in Painter. You can now just go over all the eyes and uh, good times. Just like in Photoshop. Just like in Photoshop. So now we have everything set up for our uh, our texture sets. Now we just have to start baking some maps, which we do the way we do it normally, which is under texture set settings. And then we go to bake maps. And we don't need a normal map because we uh, it's already so high res. There's nothing to bake from. That's the advantage of dealing with such a high res model. And then uh, the rest of these should be fine. Then we just hit bake head mesh map. I'm not going to worry about the other ones for now. And there we go. Now we baked all the maps we need for this project here. But you can see that we are missing an ID map because we, well, we baked it, but there was no real point in baking it because there was nothing <laughs> to bake it from. It's just one, uh, there, there was nothing, there was no information Painter could use here. But this is a nice little tip for you as well, a little bonus, which can help you. Because in this, in this case, you actually would need an ID map at all because you don't have to mask anything out. Oftentimes you would the ID maps and the texture set would be the same, but they can also not be the same. So in our case, we have our little head, which has some really funky clown painting on it. <laughs> this here is um, this here would be used as an ID map. And the reason you would use this is that you now just have clear masks you can use for something like a roughness map. So you could very easily bring this into Painter and use the color or the ID 
simply as roughness or you could use it if you want to tile something across. You can basically use these as masks. So oftentimes you would just make a bunch of these, these uh, different kind of maps, which just makes your life so much easier because now they're pre-selected. Yeah, and this is just straight from polypainting in ZBrush. Yeah, really the simplest thing in the world. So the way we get this out is we use the Multimap Exporter. This is also found under C plugins. And if you don't know the Multimap Exporter, this is the way you want to export your maps out of, uh, out of ZBrush. This is where you would do vector displacement, displacement, everything really. So just make sure texture from Polypaint paint is enabled. We don't need any subtools. Uh, we can set this to 1K because it's really not fancy. And then we can do export maps. Make sure the flip V <laughs> is enabled. Yeah. Uh, it should be. But if not, it has to be because ZBrush is weird and it works in a flipped. Yeah, weird for some way. reason it flips your UV. So flip yeah. V is a must. So just hit save and now it's going to export our map. So it, when if you're doing, if you were to do this with Mari, you would have to change the, this to work with UDIMS as well, at least if you're working with UDIMS. But this is just a single <laughs> tile. So the naming really, really doesn't matter for us. I've always wondered how ZBrush does time, because, I mean, that definitely wasn't 14 <laughs> seconds. No, ZBrush is weird when it comes to that. <laughs> ZBrush time. So the way I like to bring in my maps is I simply just drag it from the Explorer, take it in, and then you just have to set your... your uh, what what is it? Is it an environment map, colorlet, or texture? It's very much a texture, and we can just name it ID, and then we import this. In your case, you should probably import this into your project, so it gets uh, so it's there all the time for your entire project because you need it in there. You don't need current session because then it can be blitzed after you close down Painter. But there we go, and now it's here, right by Jonas's very nice hearts are <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Now you just drag it up, and now we have our ID map. So if you were to just go through this, we should now see that we have the exact same map. And you know, this does nothing right now. But what's cool about this is now we can go under layers, we can make a fill layer, and let's assume this is a roughness. Uh, I prefer to use roughness as uh, a whole separate channel, like meaning that uh, I do my diffuse in one group and then I do my, my roughness in one group and I keep, really keep it separate. So let's make this only roughness. Nice little tip is you can hold on the Alt key and that's gonna that's gonna solo this. So make the roughness like a nice broad value, so it's still enabled but it's very very broad. And then we can make another one which is uh, also roughness and it's really sharp roughness, like the sharpest. This guy here is covered in oil. <laughs> and now we can make a mask for this and right click, add mask with color selection. This is gonna add exactly that. It's gonna add a mask and it's just gonna add a color selection to us. And now we can pick color and pick the color you want. And now you can see that we get a very shiny eye right away. And the cool thing about this is you can reuse this so many times. If you were to just paint, simply paint this mask in Painter, it's harder to reuse it. But because we did it in a ZBrush and it's, it's an ID mask, everything which relies on ID mask can just use this. So we can do the same here for, we can get a nice little shiny lips and a shiny so uh, we can now just see what the mask is doing. It's incredibly rough or hard in the edges. But we can just uh, we can just smooth it off a little bit. So now we get like this nice uh, this nice mask. And yeah, there you go. This is how you would quickly and easily bring your models into from directly from Painter into into a sub no, sorry directly from ZBrush into Painter. This is not even like a hacky approach. This is the no. way I would do it. Instead of taking it through Maya and doing all that, you can very easily do it directly in ZBrush. The advantage of doing it this way in ZBrush as well is that now we can get these nice ID masks as well. You could, of course, do that in a ZBrush anyway, but it's just nice to keep everything in one software. In Maya. In Maya. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, that's it. I hope you liked this tutorial. And if you want to see more like this in the future, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe and hit that little notification button in order to get notifications when we put out videos. Thanks for watching. Thanks guys.